welcome back to our series on sustainable aquaculture. In this uh, uh, presentation, we will look at ammonia and nitrite control uh, using aquacal. Now, as we know, most farmers are aware that ammonia and nitrite should be control, controlled for good culture. So what are safe levels? With ammonia, it is generally accepted that ammonia levels should ideally be below 2 ppm. This is the, really the maximum, what I would suggest. But uh, shrimp can uh, survive with higher levels, particularly with an adult shrimp. They can tolerate up to 3.6 parts per million. Ammonia naturally converts to nitrite via the nitrification cycle. This is a natural cycle that occurs in the water phase in the pond. Nitrite is more toxic with shrimp than ammonia. However, if you don't control ammonia, you can expect high levels of nitrite to develop. Now, we've looked at the nitrogen cycle before, but just briefly to recap. In your pond bottom, you have um, two types of digestion going on, anaerobic and aerobic. Now with the aerobic uh, system, you naturally um, make ammonia. Now, in the natural cycle of nitrification, this ammonia will be converted to nitrite. So we now look at nitrite. Nitrite, as I said, is more toxic than ammonia, but some of the factors that can affect the toxicity of nitrite is low salinity. This magnifies the toxic effect. Ideally, salinity should be in 20 to 30 parts per million. However, we see cultures down to 5, 10, this sort of area, and this uh, means the nitrite is more toxic. The reason for this is that in low salinities, the shrimp uh, need to use significantly more energy to regulate osmotic pressure. So it means that the nitrite can much easily, uh, more easily affect them. The usual problem seen with nitrite is red body and loose shell. Growth rates are also affected. We usually see these problems 44 to 60 days in, into the uh, cycle. So nitrite should be controlled at 0.2 to 0.5 parts per million. Slow growth and even death will occur at high to higher nitrite rates. Calyx can help to control this by producing struvite. This is done by reaction with ammonia and phosphate in the water system. This is called the struvite displacement reaction. On the right, we see the uh, our honeycomb structure on the surface of magnesium oxide particles. This is uh, passed on when we hydrate to ammonia hydroxide, which is aquacal. This honeycomb magnesium oxide has a porosity of about 50%. This is very important because we need it to get into that particle for the reaction to occur. The other important factor is service area. In the case of our product, we have 300 to 350 square meters per gram. Uh, this is nanoactive. When magnesium, active magnesium hydroxide in the form of aquacal is added to the aquaculture pond, struvite initially precipitates in the pores of the active magnesium particles by the homogeneous displacement reaction. As you can see, we have magnesium hydroxide, ammonia from the uh, digestion cycle, and phosphate from the food. This makes struvite, magnesium ammonium phosphate, and releases OH ions, which pushes the uh, digestion cycle more to the aerobic side. We've seen the reaction occurs in the pores of the particles and releases the hydroxide ion to neutralize acids and maintain the aerobic process. Studies of the University of Queensland suggest that this reaction occurs in the particle pores without the need for the magnesium to dissolve. Over time, the whole particle is transformed to struvite. 
we've seen again we've seen this before but this is what happens at the bottom of your pond I will re recap on it there is two reactions going on at the same sort of time anaerobic and aerobic the aerobic produces hydrogen sulfide pathogens and actually quite a lot of pH at the pond bottom this uh, is quite toxic to shrimp and opens up the possibility of diseases more easily. The aerobic reaction has its own byproduct, which again can be harmful. This is ammonia and phosphate. If it's allowed to uh, run its course through the nitrification cycle, it will produce nitrite and also bad algae, which can kill your shrimp. However, with the addition of aquacal, we uh, form this struvite reaction which takes out the ammonia and the phosphate. The struvite itself is a slow release fertilizer, which uh, will propagate uh, good algae like green algae, particularly in the early stage of the culture. This is important for shrimp growth. So the struvite displacement reaction, the impact, the impact on sludge digestion. Aquacol is a flocculant forms a compact sludge. As we have seen, the aerobic digestion has ammonia and phosphate as major byproducts. The generation of ammonia and phosphate from the aerobic sludge digestion processes results in the formation of struvite, accompanied by the release of hydroxide ions, allowing the sludge to maintain the aerobic digestion process if the particles of active magnesium are available within the sludge. This means you need to have sludge to stop this, to have this reaction uh, take place. Hence, aquacal reduces ammonia and phosphate in the system while improving the degree of sludge digestion and reduces the formation of hydrogen sulfide and pathogens such as Vibrio. This is achieved uh, by suppression of the anaerobic digestion process and the ability of aquacarbo inhibit pathogen growth. We're showing here um, some field trials with uh, Vimani in line ponds in Malaysia. The control is um, stand, a standard uh, probiotic treatment with daily drainage from 21 days. The Aquacal uh, 1 is weekly uh, dosing and weekly drainage. This is again after 21 days. The Aquacal 2 is weekly dosing and monthly drainage again after 21 days. As you can see in both cases we were able to control the ammonia while in the control ammonia is uh, does peak uh, up to uh, 3 pp, uh, ppm. We reduce the ammonia with the control by a water exchange. So this is, these are the same ponds looking at the nitrite uh, generation. As you can see in both the aquacal examples, as we have little or no ammonia, we have no, uh, no or little nitrite. But however, in the uh, control, even with daily, daily drainage, we start to spike with the nitrite towards the end of the culture, even with water exchange. So the consequences of the struvite displacement reaction. Soluble phosphate in the water is reduced. Soluble ammonia in the water is reduced. Formation of ammonia nitrite is reduced because the soluble, sorry, that should be Formation of ammonia and nitrate is because of the soluble ammonia is reduced. Release of hydroxide raises the pH of the pond bottom close to neutral. This aids in the suppression of viruses and disease. The sludge remains substantially aerobic, so the hydrogen sulfide formation is suppressed. If iron is present, it is precipitated on the particle surface of the active magnesium hydroxide where it is oxidized and incorporated in the struvite crystals as a substantial impurity. The struvite is incorporated in the sludge. The struvite is a fertilizer that may be consumed by the algae for shrimp and prawn feed. But this was just a brief uh, run through of ni uh, nitrite and ammonia. 
We thank you for your attention. For further information, please contact our partners and distributors. In Malaysia, Vietnam and Thailand, this is Maha Chemicals. The contact is Dennis Toh. His email address is on the slide. For China, Taiwan and Indonesia, this is Honlex Jones. The contact is Simon Tan. Again, his email is on the slide. For India, this is Three Little Fishes. Contact is Sadania Vijayan. Again, her email is on the slide. Once again, we thank you for your attention and we hope this was of interest to you. Uh, we will um, put out a further uh, presentation on sustainable and enhanced growth of uh, aquaculture using the struvite reaction and other uh, properties of aquaculture. Thank you. Uh, I'll see you next time.